Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, hi, welcome back to my course on developing soft skills and personality. We are giving you this course through NPTEL MOOC at IIT Kanpur. We are on the fourth week, module 6, this is the last module for uh, this week and then if you look at the total number of lectures, this is the 24th lecture. This amounts to the fact that half of the course is going to be over with this one and it is time to take a reassessment of what you have learned from the course and how you have been benefiting, whether you are following the suggestions that have been given in the course. Now, uh, before I actually go to the topic, as usual we will be uh, trying to have a quick highlights of what I did in the previous one and in this one, what are we going to do? I will just wind up our discussion on telephone communication and this lecture particular, I will be focusing on the essential telephone skills which are like after basic and advanced one. Advanced ones are needed at professional level, but the essential ones are needed whether you are at a basic level or at an advanced level. In the previous lecture, I concluded uh, by giving you some ideas about advanced telephone skills. So, overall I uh, suggested to you that effectiveness needs clarity in communication and active listening. By clarity in communication, I meant in particular that you should be able to enunciate clearly. Words which sound similar, but has to be pronounced clearly and differently. So, uh, two examples I gave, one frogs which was heard as frogs. So, instead of bringing the actual animal frogs, frogs the garment that should be worn by the children were sent. Lap stuff was not mentioned clearly, so it was heard as laptop or the person actually wanted laptop, but he said that in such a manner that what was heard was lap stuff. So, this kind of confusion should be avoided especially when you are calling somebody on phone or even receiving some call and then you are taking notes and then when you take notes be clear and then if you do not understand ask them to repeat it. There is no harm in asking them to repeat it. If you are a person who is involved in handling so many phone calls, if you are at a kind of hot seat where you are dealing with so many ones, especially uh, holding simultaneous calls, there again we looked at some of the steps in which you can hold them, the way you can begin, continue and then end. I also suggested that in order to do these things, you need to organize yourself, organize your desk and then you need to know the equipment, the telephone equipment that you use. And overall I talked about some of the norms for making phone calls properly and then how you should end a call. More important I said that noting important information by using a format, so either professionally or personally. If you use a format which includes details like from to whom the message came, the date, time and then uh, the contact number etcetera, that comes handy instead of uh, uh, writing down scribbling. So, you can just fill in the blanks. But I also concluded by saying that we normally take it for granted that telephone calls are easy to handle and then uh, we can just talk without any preparation. But then when you reach a professional level, you understand that you need to face challenges such as delivering bad news. So, I concluded by giving some tips as how actually you can deliver bad news, but at the same time you should keep in mind that you should be able to earn the other person's respect even when you are delivering bad news. Now, having done that, let us look at some more challenges and then based on that let us also identify some essential telephone skills which are needed for you. In terms of more challenges, I want to tell you that there could be difficult callers. 
in any manner, they are angry, they are unhappy, they are frustrated, they are shouting at you or they are just creating problems. Now, generally when you handle difficult callers, keep these points in mind, be diplomatic, be tactful. Okay. So, like try to know you, their mind and then give facts, give necessary facts, appropriate facts and then help to resolve their problems. Offer alternative solutions and say the most important words, please, please understand our position, please understand this, sorry for the mistake, thank you for your understanding. So, these three words or phrases are very much important when you are handling challenges and let us look at the most important challenge that you are likely to face that is people who are angry with you and how do you deal with anger. Okay. Now, most of the skills which you used when you were resolving a conflict or the ones which you need right now when you want to deal someone with anger, but in terms of telephone call. So, let us uh, know certain things more relevant and then more specific in terms of making uh, somebody cool when you are talking to the person on a phone. Look at these points, be cool and calm throughout even if the other person is uh, raising the voice or uh, uh, getting uh, completely distressed, you remain cool, keep your cool and be calm throughout. Use comforting silence. So, this I mentioned to you in active listening, use comforting silence, the silence that comforts the other person and makes the other person to open up. Make use of understanding pauses. So, the, the person is talking to you and then you are also responding to that and then sometimes you just leave a pause. Okay. So, that again the person comes back okay, or you leave something for the person to grasp, reflect on. So, give some time to the person to come back, to collect herself. Offer help in whatever manner possible whatever way you can help the person, you just try to offer help. Even if you are provoked, even if the other person is rising his or her voice, never rise your voice. So, keep your cool, never rise your voice. Apologize for any inconvenience caused. So, whatever the other person is shouting at and getting angry, apologize for any inconvenience caused. And then, often the person is calling you and shouting at you on behalf of your company, on behalf of your family, on behalf of any responsibility that you have taken without even knowing what is the problem that the person is facing. So, you help the person identify the problem, you identify the problem for the person, not only identifying the problem, but you also try to offer some possible solution. Along with the problem, you suggest that sir you could do this, ma'am you can try this. And if your organization, your institute, your company or whom or you are representing is responsible for creating the problem, so then you try to give compensation, give some kind of compensation. So, that actually comforts the person who is angry. Initially, the person may not be able to accept it, especially if some loss is there. And then if the loss is with regard to some kind of respect or dignity, any kind of monetary compensation that you give will again provoke the person. But if the loss is again in terms of monetary loss, if you give again money, so the person will be rather comforted. But overall, if you cannot give money, you can give some other uh, uh, compensation, which uh, even like giving some free tickets, uh, free flight tickets depending on your customer. So, free uh, movie tickets even, free tickets for dining in a restaurant, even small things will actually reduce the anger of the person. 
So, give compensation, whatever is possible. It is not like that you cannot give any compensation at all, even the company policy is like that, but you can give something. In case of abusive expressions, sometimes you may be at the receiving end. The other person is just using bad words, four-lettered words, which you do not want to hear from anybody and which you think that you do not deserve to hear it at all. You feel enraged, you want to give it back, but do not get hurt, do not take it to heart, do not take it personally. It is the other person who is so low and who is using these kind of words to somebody like you. So, you are not going to become low, so do not get hurt, act professionally and proactively. Act professionally, again you can tell that, sir, ma'am, you are uh, crossing your limit and uh, I appreciate if you could uh, talk in uh, this manner, etcetera. But again, if they continue in the same one, just try to find out again the problem, go back to that and tell them that if that is the problem, go with the solution and try to offer compensation. You also try to empathize with the caller. When you say things like, I understand your problem, I could really feel what you will be experiencing at this moment. But at the same time, you do not have to let down your organization or company. You do not have to immediately join sites and then say that, yeah, I know that this is what my boss does. He is such an irritable guy and then uh, he is uh, really an awful person and he keeps doing this to all people. You do not have to let down your boss or your company, but just show that you are empathetic with the caller. Get back with more help and better solutions. If you cannot give the solution on the spot, just take time, get back and then get more help and then come out with better solutions. And when you do that, you promise the person that you will call back. And you also take initiative to follow up. Whenever the person is free, you call and then update the information. And in case you promise either to call back or promise to do some alternative thing or to give some kind of compensation, keep the promise. Do not break the promise, do not ignore it, do not forget it. If you say something, keep it. So, that is going to enhance the quality of your call. While you do that, there are other essential skills that you need to develop. One of the key skills that you need to develop is managing your voice. Voice and the quality of your voice can again indicate so many things to the caller. Your voice can reveal whether you are sad, sick, tired, frustrated, angry, annoyed, bored, disinterested, stressed, impatient. In fact, uh, these are all negative qualities and then if you are in this kind of situation, you are sad, sick, tired, frustrated, it is highly suggested that you should not attend to any call, you should avoid making a call and if somebody can take the call on your behalf, it is better that you give it to the person. Especially when you are stressed, that is the time you are likely to break and that is the time you are likely to show or vent out your anger on someone and the other person could be a very important person and then you just poured out your emotions and the other person was not in the right frame of mind to receive it. So, that ends up in the breaking of some kind of goodwill your company has built up maybe for uh, decades. Your voice can also indicate whether you are happy, helpful, smiling, cheerful, supportive, careful, empathetic, considerate and friendly. Now, if you have these qualities or these kinds of mindset before calling somebody on phone, that is going to help build up relationships, that is going to bridge any gap in communication between organizations and that is the right frame of mindset that you should have. 
happy, helpful, smiling, cheerful, supportive, careful, empathetic, considerate and friendly. Now, the other interesting factor about voice, many people do not know they have loud voices. Many people do not know that when they speak, they do not need loudspeakers. The other receiver do not have to put their call on speaker so that others can hear. Their voice is so loud that anybody can hear if they are in the hall. Okay. Now, if you are one among them, it is important that you need to reduce your voice in terms of the loudness that it causes. The louder it is, it is likely to cause annoyance to the other person, it is likely to cause stress, it is just like a noise pollution, it is likely to trouble the mind of the other person. The softer it is, the calmer the other person will be and then the other person is generally in a comfort level to negotiate with you. But on the other hand, many people are unaware that their voices are feeble, their voices are too weak to be heard. They need to speak aloud, they need to practice. Now, in both cases, whether you are too loud or whether you are too weak, how will you manage your voice? It is only by practice you will gain confidence on practice. How do you do that? Record your voice and listen to it. Either you record it on a tape recorder or on uh, nowadays you have uh, recording facility even on your mobile phone, you record it. Record your voice alone without your picture, record it with video also and then check how is your voice quality. Make yourself comfortable with your voice before you start talking to someone. Feel whether your voice is audible enough or is it too loud or is it too low. So, decide how you can manage your voice, okay, record it again and again, practice. Some of the key words you need to practice is the way you say sorry, genuinely sorry. Okay. Some people say sorry, but then it does not come from their heart. Okay. It amounts to a lip service. So, try to say sorry, so that the other person feels it. Thank you. When you say that, say it with gratitude. And same thing like, when, whenever you welcome a person or whenever a person says thank you. So, you say you are welcome. Okay. So, that again with a kind of warmth. Now, practice this with warmth. And then if somebody is telling you a very bad news and then your sorry has to be very empathetic. So, it should show the other person that you are showing concern. So, you try to see how you can manage your voice in terms of using these common words, particularly the polite ones in making a call. There are other essential skills which you need to know along with this. As I have been telling in the active listening part, you need to be an active listener and I am emphasizing this again and again, but then it is the most important thing. In fact, telephone skill is part of active listening skill. It is not more about speaking, it is all about listening. So, show your involvement by listening sounds. So, make use of listening sounds because the other person is actually not looking at you and he cannot see whether you are nodding your head or whether you are shaking your head. How are you talking to the other person? The other one cannot realize that. So, in order to substitute nods, you can use sounds like mm hmm, mm hmm, or you can say okay, or you can say I see. Now, sometimes when I make a call to a person, I feel that either the phone has gone dead or the other person is just left the phone and gone somewhere and then I have to repeatedly ask the other person, hey, are you there? Are you listening? Hello? So, then they say, yeah, 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 I am there, I am listening. Okay. Now, this is a very bad thing on the part of the listener the other person has to give you clues that the person is very much participating involved in the communication process which is taking place on the telephone. 
The other thing which I told you differently in different manner in various contexts, but overall remember that you should be cheerful, feel good when you are making a call, sound good and when you feel good and when you sound good, you will make the receiver also feel good. When the receiver places the uh, phone receiver that is the person who has made a call when he or she keeps the phone after making the call should keep it with a good feeling that he or she talked to you. Okay. It is important that you give them that good feeling. Maybe they started with a very bad mood, maybe they had a problem when they called you, maybe they were angry, but then at the end of it they feel good, they feel comforted when they uh, leave the receiver on the phone. Know your caller. So, when somebody is calling you or when you are going to make a call, do some homework if you have the chance, but if somebody is calling, even when the call is happening, try to figure out details of your caller such as the age, because depending on the age, you can guess whether the person is senior or a higher officer, identify the designation identify the mood of the person, health condition, accordingly you can rise the level of respectfulness that you need to show to the other person. And if the person has a designation like doctor, professor, sir okay, and uh, whether it is miss or missus, so you need to use these titles to address the caller, so that the person feels recognized. And it is one of the things that any caller wants to be recognized. And towards the end, some of you do not make some calls for the reason that you are afraid of calling someone and then sharing some news. Okay. And sometimes you just avoid it because you have some kind of fear. Now, as it has been told before, a little amount of fear is necessary to activate that fight or flight response and then energize you and it will also make you stay focused. Now, only when you use that energy that comes out of your initial fear, when you decide to confront, talk to that difficult person, talk to that unpleasant person, talk to that angry customer and fear is there, but then you decide okay, you will talk this manner use the tips that have been given to you and when you do that, you will gain confidence by repeating what you fear. Repeatedly when you talk to the person who is angry and then you will master and then people will come forward to have you as the person who can talk to anybody who is angry and then resolve any conflicts which are involved and then make the other person feel comforted and happy at the end of your talk. So, try to develop these skills, do not be afraid of making calls when you think that it is embarrassing, when it is unpleasant or when you are afraid of some person because of the intimidating personality, because of the fact that he is a higher authority or because of the fact that she may not talk to you So, or uh, these kind of complexes. But Try to replace that fear with confidence and confidence comes only by practice. Be polite overall, be polite and then when you are polite apart from saying uh, please, thank you and all that, know the difference between some of the polite expressions particularly uh, these two like may I and can I. May I talk to you? May I speak to you for a moment? Can I talk to you? So, you can see the difference. May I is actually functionally both are uh, kind of requests, but may I is real polite, much more polite. Can I is something that like a senior can ask a junior. Okay. It is all the time safe how may I help you, okay. then can I help you. Okay. So, even if you look at these words, you can see the tonal differences that will come when you use may I and can I. Can I is like 
possibility can you do this okay may i is okay possible but still i am giving you a chance so try to use may i understand the difference and similarly when you use will you do this for me can you do this for me again choose will you most of the times and in will you add please will you please do this for me will you please fix an appointment with the director at 9 o'clock tomorrow so that will you please makes it polite use also in terms of uh, uh, polite markers could you would you now could you is still milder than can you okay and would you is still milder in terms of politeness than could you so to tone down could you you can again add could you please do this for me would you please mind doing this for me and then as i said add always these polite markers please sorry thank you welcome in fact uh, uh, when you record the voice you try to say this in different manner and then record it and see how it sounds when you say sorry do you really feel that uh, you are saying sorry okay and uh, last but not the least avoid jargons so jargons or words which are known only to very small groups of people like journalists they use their own jargons computer science people they use their own jargons doctors use their own special words now even if you are talking to a small group avoid using that also avoid using technical words which is difficult for the other person to comprehend difficult words do not use try to use simple words try to be as natural and spontaneous as possible do not talk in an affected tone do not talk in an artificial manner just be natural and uh, even in formal ones you can be natural which sounds little bit informal but still uh, instead of giving you the image that you are uppish so it's rather better to show that you are slightly appearing to be informal spontaneous natural cool so that the other person feels friendly and comforted talking to you anticipate problems not all phone calls are going to end pleasantly for you although you will try to make it best for the other person other person can actually spoil your entire day entire mood for that day some persons can completely spoil your week some some persons can talk to you in such a manner you can be completely stressed out a call from a credit card vendor and then you know sometimes you have not paid long time due and then calls coming and then just abusing you and then you have nothing to tell at that moment so these kind of calls can actually just get into your nerves and then it can uh, uh, break you on the other hand there will be situations where you start politely you never know how it is going but try to anticipate problems problems not only by the nature of the other person but you can even give contingency to technical snags suppose your uh, phone is using a battery check whether it's working properly it should not be the time that the charge should run out an important call delay sometimes you are kept long in the waiting misunderstandings not because of you but because of the other person's inability to understand maybe your language use or some kind of problem but again take care of that the worst situation could be flaring up of emotion by the other person particularly so you said something inadvertently it was not your intention to hurt the other person but the other one took it wrongly and then uh, started shouting at you showing anger also the conversation started in a very polite manner at the beginning so anticipate problems especially in professional calls and be prepared for that as it is said so to be forewarned is to be forearmed so if you know that this person will definitely ask for something create a problem so keep those data on your table when you make the phone call 
So, when you know that you are prepared, your mindset will be cool and calm and then you will be confident to handle it. Last two points, uh, just before I conclude. Remember, each call is an opportunity to enhance your personality and of course, to develop your soft skills and the image of your organization or the image of the people whom you are representing. You make a bad call, it is actually reflecting on your organization or the people whom you are representing. So, they will not say only bad about you, but they will think that the institution, the organization that has hired you is also really bad. But on the other hand, remember that it is an opportunity to enhance your personality and the image by building a good relationship with the other person who has made a call. Make a good call, leave that good feeling at the end of it, build up a good relationship. So, that again will enhance the image of your organization and you and it will help you to develop the personality. The other thing that you should remember overall when I am going to conclude this uh, complete module on telephone skills and then almost uh, uh, three modules I have spent on this. The last but not the least and I would say the most important also, you should be the person anybody wants to talk to. Remember I started this with a kind of uh, self awareness uh, questions, self reflective questions where you, I asked you whom would you like to talk to? And who is that person who are, whom you are avoiding to talk to. So, you should be the person anybody wants to talk to, not the one everybody wants to avoid. People should not feel like avoiding you when they see your call on the caller ID. So, they tell the children that tell this person that I am away, I am not at home. So, I am somewhere, I am on the way, I am in office, do not give my mobile number to this person do not become that person and think about situations, why people are avoiding you, what made them avoid you, is it your long unmindful talk, is it the fact that you are so boring and then intruding into others time and then without showing any consideration, without being empathetic, are you so arrogant and selfish when you make the call, you demand that the other person always be at your beck and call. Now, ask these things, why people are avoiding? If at all somebody is avoiding, try to change the situation, follow the tips and slowly develop yourself as the person anybody wants to talk to, not necessarily on phone or also in person. Having said this, is there a limitation of uh, this uh, telephone as an invention? Look at this uh, uh, famous quote from the musical genius A. R. Rahman, when somebody interviewed him, so he uh, said that uh, the time that he uses for music, he said, for me there is no day or night for music. I often work through the night without phone calls disturbing me. Okay. So, whether you are a good person or bad person, whether your voice, everything is good. There are people like A. R. Rahman who do not want phone calls at all to disturb their creative talent. Now, can phone calls be such nuisance? Can it really affect somebody's creative flow? Think about this. This is the theme in which I am going to start the next set of uh, modules, how technology which is supposed to actually give all benefits is actually causing lot of harm not only to the environment, but also to our personality and how it is actually affecting in the name of enhancing our soft skills, actually it is trying to hamper the growth of our personality and development of soft skills. So, with this note, let me conclude this. It is about uh, off of uh, the entire course you have been with me. So, I thank you for that. This the remaining off is as exciting as this one. I hope you uh, stay with us and thank you for watching this video. Have a very nice day.